We go to Ghana, where the government has extended free electricity to poor citizens till January 2021 due to the economic hardship caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata, made the announcement on Thursday, adding that all citizens, irrespective of social status, would enjoy free water supply for the next three months. President Nana Ado Akufo-Addo, in a compassionate move during the lockdown, announced three months of free electricity for lifeline consumers and 50% rebate for consumers who went beyond the lifeline threshold. He assured Ghanaians that the government would continue to put their aspirations first. Joining us live now is Kwasi Amposa Boateng uh, to make sense of all of this. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Boateng. Uh, good morning from Tema, the port city in Ghana. <laughs> good to have you joining us. Now, some have lauded the government for being compassionate in providing you know, freebies at this time, whereas others have criticized the government as promoting populist agenda. Which is it, in your opinion? Well, it's a combination of the two. I believe that the government is compassionate because it sees itself as finding ways of easing some of the economic pressures. So I think for... I can hear you. Go ahead. For most people, if for most people, the electricity and the water is a basic utility. So I think it's a very effective way of bringing relief. The populist side of it is that we are in an election year. So, I mean, I have to be quite honest and transparent in the fact that I'm a supporter of Nana Kukwadu. And it also gives him a platform to say that he cares. That's what it does. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the case of providing freebies post-lockdown and with eased uh, restrictions? Are we going to see this uh, continue? I, I, I think there will be more stimulus. How the form it takes, I can't tell. But what one clear direction that I can foresee this current government, uh, the Kufuadu government, if it's managed to get the mandate to extend its, its stay for another four years, is that it focuses on economic development. And the utilities form the basis of most people's spending. So in a way, I don't know if it will be the utility, but I think the stimulus will continue till our economy gets back on its feet. Mm -hmm. And just on the heels of that, you know, those who have criticized uh, the, the president for his actions are basing it on the fact that, yes, the economy, uh, the economy rather, of the nation has been affected. Now, can Ghana afford these freebies? Uh, I don't think uh, uh, that Ghana can afford them indefinitely. But at the moment, I believe it's critical so that you manage to support people to cope. Because, I mean, let me give you an analogy. If you look at most families, their ability to maintain a good hygienic environment is also to be able to have portable water. So if you actually reduce the portable water, you can't afford to increase health and hygiene problems. So it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a luxury. It's actually a necessity. And I think... For me, in terms of social and uh, environmental concerns, we must see it as a necessity. It's not an affordability. Mm. If we don't do it, the costs are going to be even greater. Right. I mean, you've also got some critics, you know, here in Nigeria who are saying that, see, um, you know, Ghana is essentially making the rest of us look bad. What's your thought on that? Well, uh, if I, I, I consider Nigeria a big regional brother, it is, it is not good to compare the two. <laughs> our population size, our challenges are quite different. What Ghana is trying to do is that we have a model that works for us. If that model can be replicated, I will be happy that it makes sense for people to consider ways that you can relieve people's stress, economic disaster that's happened, and it's not trying to look too good. It's try I mean, I, I feel that it's not making people look bad, mm -hmm. but it's showing the way as to how people could look good. Right. All right, before I let you go, where do you see things going by way of Ghana's handling of the crisis, you know, COVID-19 crisis, generally speaking? I, I think slowly Ghana is having a national agenda. I mean, there's some politics involved. Uh, 
that we are not out of the woods yet, so I, I would guard against complacency. Ghana is still quite strict. I mean, I am frustrated because as a businessman, I've not been able to travel out because our borders are closed. But I believe that in the, in the very near future, we will see changes in policy around the COVID based on scientific evidence, what is actually being gathered and being assessed. Mm -hmm. I don't think we will stray from that. We also need to appreciate the fact that the world around us, I mean, our big dream and our big prayer, and I have to stress that a vaccine is found. It will be a game changer should we have a vaccine. Mm -hmm. But till then, the science, prudence, and careful management of coping mechanisms. That is what I foresee for the future. Right. Thank you so very much, Mr. Boateng, for your thoughts. Uh, you've put it rightly there that we need to guard against complacency. Please do stay safe out there, and thank you for joining us here. Thank you, too.